we wanted to kind of look at the things that make Docker so good and so consistent. Obviously, one of the things that he does, as we talk about in the throwing chain reaction, is he has a very consistent setup. If you look at this throw or any of the throws really throughout the season, you'll notice that the beginning and the start, he's very comfortable with the discus. And he, as he moves himself into position, he kind of goes here with his arm swing. He's going to go what we call as our three position start. He's going to set up the throw. He's going to take a long pre-wind, a long wind. And you're going to notice now, one of the things that we say is a little tricky to understand is when we see a thrower, we're trying to maintain the center line at the start of the throw. And he does do that. You'll see that he has movement here. But you're going to notice the key thing is when he moves the hips, he creates a ton of separation and stretch reflex between the hips. And that is going to help him create what we refer to as that big pillar two. And so as he creates this shift to the left, again, getting around the left leg is the big key for any thrower. So the entry side. So we're going to notice the length of the entry arm. We're going to notice how the position of the foot is turning ahead. It's past nine o'clock. Um, so one of the things you're going to notice too is the weight is forward, how he moves right hip with the left foot. So as he moves into the throw, you're going to notice that he's really leading and this left side is pulling everything long and into the middle of the circle. He's going to get an incredibly wide sweep. You're going to see that high wide sweep leg, knees are out, and you're going to notice that how high the foot is and how level the foot is at this point. The position of the knee driving, dropping down into the throw, he's really pushing that knee to the sprint point. You're going to notice that we see the left arm and sweep leg counterbalance. And again, notice the angle of the body and the discus back. This is what we refer to as pillar three. This is where he's applying speed into the throw. And this is where we look at the transition. So now he's going to start transitioning from the sprint leg to the middle, right, the delivery leg. And so you're going to notice this is where the rewrap occurs. He's going to keep the shoulder long and away. You can see the high point of the discus back here. And this is the key, noticing where he loads and lands. He stays on the ball of the foot. And that knee from this point is just going to continue to be really pushing ahead of the toe throughout the throw. You'll notice that that's another difference when we broke down the Daniel Stahl so consistent and it's that that constant acceleration and lack of hesitation and you're really starting to see this um, with Dockers over the last couple of seasons. Now look at how he stays on the right. You're going to notice he lands on the ball. He's got that high point here. He's got the left arm is really counterbalancing him over the right leg which enables him to keep his chest over the right knee. And so at this point, you're going to see how the knee is going to be moving ahead and watch the elevation of the heel. So you'll see that the knee and you'll see that the hip are going to be driving into the throw and the direction that they're going to be facing. So as he comes down, you'll notice this is what we refer to as pillar four and there's five. We notice the block foot coming flat to the ground, the elevation of the Delivery leg heel. So again, that's the push of the knee and the hip into the throw. And then you're going to see how he maintains that heel, that foot on the ground pretty through this point, through the delivery, but he'll elevate, whereas Stahl will keep it down even a bit longer. So Frederick keeps the left arm a little wider. And again, but you're going to notice the contact at the delivery point. Both feet are still pretty much on the ground. And look where the hip is facing. The hip is facing into the sector down this way and that pulls the discus forward and that's why you see most elite throwers their release is at this point right you're going to see that right back here he's moving so fast so on this breakdown you're going to see that the hip is ahead and the shoulders ahead and that's what creates the whipping motion of the discus and you can see it's not the motion of throwing this way he's rotating all the way through so that the discus whips around now let's let's go back and this was what they had called um, they had initially called it a foul if you look on the throw it's all pretty clean you can see that there was clearly no foul and obviously the video review showed there was no foul he's a big dude and he is super strong and super athletic so you know this is a guy that's probably what he's right about six eight 
and he weighs 340 pounds or so. So just a, just a giant man. Again, I think one of the things that goes on here, what trumps everything, Stahl is rocking the beard. But in all seriousness, one of the things we look at is he's a big guy and he maximizes those levers. So look at the, look at the length that gets set up. You see how he's gonna wind, set that position, and then you're gonna see that same length right from here to here. You see how he's maintaining that length. So we always talk about in our system, we want a long setup, so we're gonna have a long entry. And this is all part of getting on balance. Notice that length, that's a great counterbalance. When you see the left arm counterbalancing the discus, he's gonna be setting up a really nice radius and, a, and he's setting up a really nice orbit. So you see that high point here, and you notice that as he comes along, we talk about this. The first pillar we talk about setting up. The second pillar we talk about is setting up maximum power. That's getting the axis to rotate around and so the thrower can drive into the throw. And this is one of the things that clearly Stahl does extremely well. And if you notice uh, with Coach Veston's athletes, they all have a similar looking technique. Again, I think that's the thing. Coach V has a system. So you're gonna notice when you look at any kind of coach, they're gonna have a system. All coaches have a system. One of the things that I think uh, Coach V talks about is you know keeping level, level shoulders and level hips. And you can see that Stahl does that very well. And then he's gonna be able to move around that axis. Again, we call that pillar two, we set, and then pillar three is dropping in. You're gonna notice that Stahl really does create that nice sprint. He's really moving in. And you notice again, our two level lines of these guys staying here, you're gonna notice that shoulders and hips, again, are pretty level. What's the key of all this? How do we simplify it? We've gotta get on balance. So we set up our start, this is one of the things we talked about and we get on balance. So once we get on balance, now speed is able to be created because now you can actually come out of that. Imagine a sprinter coming out of the box and if he's leaning to the side, he's gonna be stumbling. He can't be efficient in that linear motion forward. If the hips are going this way and they're trying to go this way, you're not gonna be able to create a sprint. That's the same thing in the rotational throws. The hips have to be moving in that linear position to the center of the circle. So you're gonna notice that here. One of the things that we've, we've seemed to think that looks a little different is Stahl has, in my opinion, on this throw, he has a little bit wider sweep than he has had in some of his previous years. And I think this looks exciting because this to me looks like he's throwing huge throws really effortlessly. He's banging 68 meters, 69 meters, 70. This is the second time over 70 meters this year. He just the next day after this 71 meter throw, the very next day within 24 hours, basically throws 69 meters. And rumor has it that there was a foul over 70 as well. So a slight foot foul. So this guy's on fire, throwing extremely well, and it's gonna be really exciting. So the point is here is as he comes through the sprint, you're gonna see that once you create that linear motion and you're able to create speed and everything's moving efficiently, you're gonna notice that Stahl is able to, how this his sprint slash block leg, you notice how as the foot touches down, look at how much the left is with him. A lot of times there's something we call the back end where you see young throwers and you'll see young throwers and what they'll do is they're gonna back in. So they're kind of turning one side and they're leaving the leg back. They're not moving the whole system of the hips. And that's one of the things, again, um, having met and gotten the opportunity to speak to Coach V about how they kind of train, he's looking at that, that level hip and shoulder position, something we've included in our system, you know, that we've, we've taught for a lot of years as well, but just using different vernacular. I think Coach V's is very easy, you know, concept to grasp, it makes total sense. But if you don't set up this position here correctly, that's gonna be very difficult to maintain level because if the hips are falling across the circle, then you're gonna have the athlete, you're gonna have diverging force and you need converging energy in the throw. And that's what creates speed. So again, once we create balance, you're gonna see stall is extremely balanced, great tension. You're gonna notice this next piece that he sets up. You're gonna see everything pretty level. Notice that length again that we saw in the beginning of the throw. He's maintaining that throughout the throw. And then right here, he's gonna come around and then you're gonna see you're gonna see this position. We talked about this with Valerie Allman and you see here's that 70 meter. Look at that, that axis and look at how everything squares up. So this is gonna enable everything 
how we get that vertical axis so that we can generate power. We call this pillar five, and this is now he's creating blazing speed. Now he's gonna be able to rotate and take the throw out. And again, you're gonna see the block arm, you see it, it's long, it stops. He's gonna have the shoulder stop, the block stop here, and then everything is moving out and around and he's creating that really nice long path. You see that discus is right on the tip of that arrow. So the keys again, how's he get there? This is our opinion. Again, what we're looking at is this is a tremendous throw. We're not trying to say, oh, he should do this or he should do that. We're trying to say, we think this is what they're doing. These are the key biomechanical points. You see these are good looking positions, why they're happening. And generally, that's going to be the most important thing as you're a developing thrower to understand a lot of these core things. How are you going to get on balance? How are you going to create speed? When those things happen in your balance, you're going to be able to come through and typically smash the delivery. And that's what you're seeing pretty consistently with Saul. He's throwing these big throws week in and week out, and it's really cool to see. So that's our kind of our rundown. Again, huge congrats to Daniel and Coach V and Global Throwing. And again, with a year where we've had such limited competitions to watch and everybody lost seasons, it's really a nice uh, relief to get some of these types of results and see these things happening. And really excited when the season can get back to normal. Congrats to those guys. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up, comment below, share this video too, give a little love out there. And we will see you guys on the next video.